Hello everyone, this is Pastor Donna Hankla with the Big Four PH Church in Kimball, West Virginia. And I'm so excited that you decided to join us this week. And we have had some good responses on the uh, YouTube from the messages that we've been teaching. We've been really talking about some things with the end of time. And today we're going to talk about dreams at night, divine encounters. How many of y'all know that God can give us dreams, that he wants us to to have dreams and instructions. He speaks to his people. He speaks in various ways. Of course, the main way is his word. But I know when uh, when I was younger and I was starting out in a career, I asked God to give me a dream and, and I wrote it down and, and, and he brought it everything to pass. So I want us to talk about this today. Dreams at night and divine encounters. And Father, I pray for those that are that are with us today. I pray for the presence of God to minister and let them know that you are a God that speaks to your people in Jesus' name. You know, Jesus reveals that it is the desire of the Heavenly Father to communicate with his people. He wants to communicate with us, and I'm sure you've seen this scripture, we're like sheep. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You know, just think about it. What if the shepherd never spoke to the sheep or talked to them? I mean, just think about it. You have pets, you have animals, you talk to them. There needs to be communication, and he wants to communicate with us. And so Jesus is telling us, my sheep hear my voice. And we have the desire to communicate and learn from the Father. Now, the primary way that God teaches us is by reading his word. The Word of God and His Spirit, they guide us, they teach us, and they reveal truth. And as a matter of fact, any type of dream or vision that, that you may receive to be of the Lord, you need to be mature enough how to share it, when to share it, what to share it, and it should have scriptures that confirm it. Uh, any type of dream or vision will have scripture confirmation that is of God. So he does primarily speak to us through his word. And he, is, he we can ask for confirmation. He, anytime I have a dream or a vision or whatever, I try to ask for confirmation. And I receive that through the word of God. Jesus tells us, as I said, it is the spirit that quickens and the flesh profits nothing. But the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. This is God's word. There is life in here. This is a God's word gives us living a life. Now, heavenly dreams are also given at tonight. In the Bible, in this Bible, even from Genesis to Revelation, there are dreams that God gave to people that guided them. He gave dreams to kings. He gave dreams to, to prophets. He gave dreams to common people. He gave dreams and visions to people to guide, instruct, and warn, and direct them. And those were heavenly dreams and they were certainly dreams at night with divine encounters. And you know, when we have a divine encounter, we need to be respectful. We need to be mature. We need to uh, have wisdom as we, as we uh, engage, as we learn about these things, because we're talking about supernatural things that are gifts of God, and we need to be respectful and reverencing there. Now, we see uh, from the book of Job, Job 33, 14 through 16, for God speaks once and even twice, yet no man notice it. In a dream, a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men while slumbering on the bed, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions. That's a beautiful scripture in Job. Now, I want to read that one more time to you. In Job 33, 14 through 16, from the Amplified Study Bible, the God for God speaks once, and even twice, yet no one notices it. In a dream, a vision of night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering upon the bed, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. So at this point, I just want to address you, and I want to again welcome you on here, and I'm going to say stay with us, because I'm going to talk to you about some dream interpretations. What do various animals mean when you dream about animals? What do various colors mean? I'm going to talk to you about some dream interpretations. I'm going to talk to you about a recent dream that I had. So you want to stay for this full message. And I want you to know that we have had some urgent prayer requests and we are praying for you. Jeff, we're praying for you. We're praying for all those that, and we're thankful for all those that do support us. 
All right, now, in the, I want us to look at Matthew 2, 12. Here it is at Christmas time, and I know you're familiar with the story of the wise men. And in Matthew 2, it's one of my most favorite stories of the Bible. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, there came wise men from the east, saying, Where is he that is king of the Jews? They were looking for Jesus. They were following his star at night. Saying, and, and they said, we have come to worship him. And they came to Herod, the king of Judea. And when he heard these things, Herod was troubled and all Jerusalem with them. Even the mention of the word king, another king, got him so upset. He was so jealous and envious. And, and you know, he was brutal. He murdered several of his own people. He was, he, was, uh, he was known as Herod the Great and he was loyal to Rome and he built lavish temples. He had, he had 10 wives. He was, uh, he killed people, he destroyed people, he destroyed all the baby boys from the age two and under in an attempt to kill Jesus, massacre. But, but that was after the wise men had left. So he gathered, he gathered all the chief priests and scribes and he demanded them where Christ should be born. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. And so Herod, what he did, he realized that there was another king being born and he called the wise men together and he said, look, when you find this young child, I want you to come back and tell me where he is so that I can go and worship him also. Then it tells us that when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they came to the house, they saw the young child, Mary and his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And they opened their treasures. They presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But I want you to see what happened here. That the wise men were warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, but they departed to their country in another way. This dream saved the life of baby Jesus because Herod truly in his heart intended to kill baby Jesus. And so this dream, was a, it protected Jesus, and it was a necessary dream, a dream on time. And so it was a dream that gave them right direction, that protected them and protected baby Jesus. Now, so I want to ask you, you know, God would want to give you dreams that would help you to go in the right direction and in the right pathways. Maybe you need direction in your life today. And God can give you divine direction. It's so important that we go the way that he would have us to go. He says that he will instruct us and guide us and lead us in the right ways, the ways that will profit us. So then we're going to move on here. He says in Acts 2, 17, in the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit. Dreams and visions are experienced by the people in these days. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all of my people and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will be dreams, will have dreams. And we've already talked about these last days that even October the 7th was the beginning of a war in the Middle East. And we know that when we see Jerusalem and Israel engaged in war, that, that Israel is a, is a, the Jude, Jerusalem is a, is a, the piece of prophecy, the time clock that we look at. When things start happening there, we are to be alert. We are to watch and to see what's going on because there's much spiritual activity going on. And in these days, he's going to try to pour out. His, he's going to, God's going to communicate. He's pouring out his spirit. His people are prophesying. People are seeing visions and dreaming dreams because the spirit of God is communicating more frequently with these people in these end days. So yes, it is proper for you to ask God to communicate with you and to reveal his will to you, primarily through his word. But you can pray for him to bless you at night also. You know, in the night, we can expect God to bless our sleep. Before we lay our heads upon the pillow, we should pray for God to bless us and instruct us in the night hours. Indeed, we have his promises of sweet sleep. How many of you all struggle in this area? God can heal you. All he says in Proverbs 3, 24, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Now, the dream, um, the dreams give us direction and they give us insight. They give us instructions from God. How do we know? 
How do we receive a dream from God that is truly from God? So we're going to look at that. In Matthew 7, 7 through 11, he tells us, ask God and ask and he will give it. If you ask before you go to bed at night, ask God to, re to reveal the dreams and instructions to you at night. Step two, expect to receive. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And you're saying, well, Donna, can I actually have a heavenly dream at night? Yes, you can. If you want to use it for the, God, for the right purposes. Step three, be still when you first awaken and write down the details of the dream and I also put a date on it. So if you're wanting to receive more revelation from God, you've got to be responsible with the revelations that you currently have. You've got to write them down and, 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 and date them. For step four, ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding and interpretation of the dreams. And with that, there should be scriptures that will, that will point you and reassure you that, that you're confirming that it's okay. Step five is be very careful with whom you share this dream. Don't it really upsets me to see people just jump on YouTube and share all sorts of dreams. And I had this dream and that dream and that dream. They don't even know what they're talking about. A dream is a precious gift of God. It must be protected and shared at the right moment. You know, remember Joseph with his five brothers. Joseph had dreamed about the moon and the stars and the brothers bowing down. And that is from, it, from the book of Genesis. And his brothers became instantly jealous and threw him in a pit. Not everybody is happy about your dreams. Step seven, never rely on a dream as a sole source for a major decision. Be cautious about dreams. Dreams should not contradict the scriptures. Now let's move on to some more things here in the area of dreams, and we're going to talk about some dream interpretation. God led his people in Psalm 78, 14, uh, I want to read that to you. He wanted to lead them and direct them. He led them in a cloud by day and a fire by night. <laughs> Psalm 78, 14. I want us to look at that. Even in the olden days with Moses, God had a way to lead them and to protect them. And in 78, 14, it says, In the daytime, he led them with a cloud and all the night with a light of fire. This is so amazing. And... Uh, I really think I'm going to write my next book about this, A Cloud by Day and a Fire by Night. You see here that this uh, cloud by day and a fire by night protected them. It guided the children of Israel. And not only that, the Bible says that that cloud of fire stood between the Israelites and the Egyptians when the Egyptians were trying to, to overtake them and defeat them. And God protected his people. So he protects us with dreams. He gives us protections and instru he gives us instructions that will protect us, protect our family, and protect our future. So he led them with a cloud by day and a fire by night. And God wants to do the same for you. Yes, he can lead you. You can experience his presence during the day. You can sense his power, his fiery presence at night if you just ask. Uh, I'm also reminded with dreams in, in Daniel 8.18 8, that an angel touched Daniel in, the, when, with, in an area of dreams and that, that Daniel had, was given several dreams. So we could, we could go through the Bible and pick out a lot of these, but we're just talking about a few of them. Daniel 8.18. 8, now, as he was speaking with me, this was the angel. I was in a deep sleep on my face towards the ground and he touched me and he set me upright. Even while Daniel was sleeping, the angel came and touched him. You know, the angels are there for you also if you ask. And we see another thing about dreams in Matthew 27, 19, that Pilate sat on the throne and Jesus was brought before Pilate to be crucified on the cross. And Pilate could find no th nothing wrong, no legal matters here. So in Matthew 27, 19, his wife says, when he was sat down on the judgment seat, that was Pilate. His wife says, have, no, have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Even the dream was telling Pilate, Jesus is innocent. If you put him on the cross, you're killing an innocent man. So dreams were... Dreams are meant to warn, instruct, to guide directions. And I'm going to share one recent dream with you. And right now I'm going to go into some of the meanings of dreams. 
If you dream about a cow, that, and it goes right along, the cows represent prosperity. So I want to look at Genesis uh, 41 with this. We have a scripture, and we have scriptures with this. Dreaming about cows sometimes indicates an interpretation there that there's possibility of prosperity there, prosperity. And we see this in Genesis 41 that Pharaoh dreamed at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, behold, he stood by the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored fat flesh cows, and they fed in the manas. So he dreamed about these cows that were prosperous. And so you go on and read about the dream and this, and you can see more about it. But that's just telling you some of the interpretations of what a cow might represent would be prosperity. And then we dream a dream about a deer. What does, what does it mean if you dream about a deer? A lot of times it means something to do with graceful, swift, sure-footedness. And we see this from Psalms 42.1. If, if you receive a, a dream about a deer, Psalms 42.1. As a deer pants for the water, so do I pant for you, says David. All right. Okay. As a heart, a deer pants after the water, so my soul pants after the Lord, someone that's hungry and thirsty for God. What does an eagle represent? An eagle represents a prophetic calling on people in their lives. If you dream a dream of that, there could be a prophetic calling in your life. So let's look at Isaiah and see what, what it has to say here. Isaiah 40, 31 about the eagle. You know, I think I love eagles. I just, I absolutely love them. And this is just showing you a picture of eagle flying. But in Isaiah, all right, 40, 31, we're going to read about the eagle. He says, but those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And then a fish, if you dream about a fish, it represents the souls of men. And Jesus in Mark 1, 17, he told his disciples that he would make them fishers of men, representing the souls of men. So you dream about fish, you're probably dreaming something along the lines of souls of men. Mark 1, 17. And here, here it is. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you to become fishers of men. And finally, one more, if you dream about a horse, you're dreaming about power, and even possible conquest and spiritual warfare. And we see this from the book of Job 39. Job 39, let's go to that right quick. Job 39, 19 through 25. Have you not given the horse his strength? Have you not clothed his neck with thunder? Can you make him afraid as a grasshopper? And the glory of his nostrils is terrible. He piles in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He goes on to meet the armed men. So the horse, dreaming about a horse, is representing power and conquest. Now, if you dream about certain colors, I'm going to share that at the end. Certain colors, blue represents re revelation, knowledge of God. And you can find that throughout the scriptures. Green represents growth and prosperity. Now, I'm going to share a recent dream that I had with y'all, and, and I'll just pray God's leading on this. And it was, it was kind of, it was 11-21. Uh, I dreamed at night. I had a very vivid dream, and I, I woke up, and I saw the face of a horse. And the face of the horse, and its teeth was like that. It was narrowing. And it, I saw this face and those teeth, and his mouth was open, and he had narrowing teeth. It looked just like that. And those teeth kept coming closer and closer and closer to me. And then I, I was, that looked like those teeth were going to engulf me. And I, suddenly, though, I was lifted away from that horse. And it was a vivid dream, and I had it, and I prayed for interpretation, and I studied about it, and asked God about it. And I sensed that it was an alert, a warning, that I should pray for God's protection upon me and my family, our households. So I immediately got up and I prayed prayers of protection, Psalms 91, God's protection, 
angels to protect us. And as I got engaged in a time of prayer, praying protection over me and my family, and I sensed God's protection upon our families as I prayed. And, you know, I know that horses represent war and that they're used for military purposes. So I realized that I was praying spiritual warfare prayers of protection. And then a scripture came to me about teeth, that God himself will smite the teeth in Psalms 3, 7. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies in the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. So, you know, that was a dream that encouraged me in prayer and intercession. So dreams and the, the message today is dreams at night and divine encounters. But remember that the primary way God speaks to us is through his word. But yes, God can bless you through the night if you just ask. And Father God, I pray today for each and every one that is with us. I pray that your spirit would guide them and that they would hear and see you, that their eyes would be open to the truths in your word. I pray that you would give them dreams and visions and, and dreams at night, visions in the day that would point them to God and point them to the scriptures. I pray that you would give them dreams to warn and protect them. I pray that you would give them dreams to give them direction. I pray that you would give them dreams to draw them closer to you. I pray that angels of God would be with them throughout the night and day and that they would sense God's presence is with them. And God, today we honor you and we love you and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And I love you in the Lord.